Hey, it's Jonathan helping you work better with more freedom and accountability online. Today we're going to talk about love and care in remote work. So the quote of the day is from David Allen and he says, it is a misuse of love and care to use love and care to get work done. David said this while uh, adopting holacracy in his organization. Um, if you're familiar with GTD, David Allen's the man behind the getting things done GTD framework that many people use for organizing their lives. Um, and I think that he came to this realization when he saw that there were ways to work that don't require love and care in order to move the work forward. And we'll talk about how you can do that in your organization. So first, let's talk about the old paradigm dark arts. This is a term a friend of mine, a colleague, uh, mentioned on a call recently. And he talks about um, the dark arts of politics and persuasion and incentive and shame. Now, why am I talking about love and care and shame in the same sentence? Um, behind a lot of that love and care is the potential for guilt or shame. You want to stay in the good graces of the, of the people who are showing you love and care, and you don't want that to be taken away. Um, but using that is actually, is actually disruptive to actually get work done. What I propose is using other methods to get the work done, and then the love and care is more pure and, and, and authentic. Uh, and it also, by separating these things out, it also allows you to care for someone and still be straight with them about the work. So in the new paradigm, we have clear requests, being really clear about what you're asking for or what you need, um, and giving people autonomy and accountability. And by that, I don't mean empowering them to make decisions like my boss empowers me, but having structures in your organization and agreements, common agreements and cultural norms that allow people to work autonomously and allow you allow people to get accountability from each other without the need for a boss to come down from the top. Um, and there are a lot of ways to get that. I know it sounds kind of abstract. Uh, we won't go into it now, but if you'd like to, I'd be happy to talk more about it later. Please contact me. Um, and then also respect and trust. So no team is going to work if you don't trust the people that you're working with. Um, now, that sounds a little softer, and I'd like to keep my, my work grounded in, um, in, in specific actionable steps. Um, but what you can do is, if you don't trust someone to do something, you can have that, you can process that tension, or process that concern. And that brings me to concern processing. The organization itself needs to be able to process concerns all the time on an ongoing basis. And this is everyone in the organization. So one of the first things that I do is I ask everyone to agree to just keep a list of any concern they have with their work. And this can be about people. It can be about expectations. It can be about external realities. And then we have a, a system and a process for bringing those things up in a safe and healthy way and getting real organizational change from them. The concerns and, and or tensions, as we call them, are actually the fuel for organizational change. And many companies avoid tension. They avoid concerns. We want to turn that on its head and in this new paradigm, use concerns to change the organization, change how we work. Um, a simple way to think of this is just the switch from predict and control to sense and respond. And this comes out of Frederick Leloux's work uh, in reinventing organizations, talking about the change from orange organizations to green and teal organizations. So that's all I have for you today. Um, if your meetings suck, I can fix them. Uh, please contact me, j at teal.dog. I've done this for quite a few companies, and um, the results have been overwhelmingly successful. Um, the state of Washington did a study with this process and found a 93% reduction in their decision-making cycle time, which I, I'm scared to tell that to people because if I tell them I can make your meetings 10 times more efficient, they probably won't believe me. Um, so let's go for five times more efficient. Anyway... Uh, if you're having challenges in the new environment, please reach out. Um, I'm offering a special deal. I can transform one team in four weeks for $1,000. I know that money's tight right now. Um, this is a great way to, to transform the way you work, empower people, and get lasting change uh, that will serve you and your organization and your purpose and just make everyone's lives better, uh, ground, ground floor, ground truth. So get in touch. Um, you can reach me at teal.dog slash chat or j at teal.dog. And um, also please join us on Friday morning for a weekly reflection call. This is at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. 
and there'll be a link in this, the description. This is a chance for everyone to just get on the call and share what's been working for them this past week uh, and what's, what, are the, what their challenges have been. Um, this call is going to be quite a bit shorter than the last one. The last one was an hour and a half. This one's going to be 45 minutes. Um, so please jump on and let's share some wisdom together. This is an opportunity for people to really share what's up for them um, and not an just another webinar, which there have been so many of recently. Also, um, on April 6th, Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, um, two of my colleagues are doing a, a talk called Effective Remote Facilitation During a Pandemic. These guys are great. Um, so I'll leave a link to the meetup in the description. Feel free to RSVP for that. And please show up on Friday. I'll also leave a link in the description for that. And that's it. May you be uh, healthy and well and effective in your work. And I wish you the best.